Where can you visit a village on the sea with a fabulous view of a real volcano? On the island of Sicily, buongiorno. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Sicily, an island just two miles off the coast of southern Italy. But to say it's Italian is not exactly correct. Sicily has its own government, its own version of the language, and definitely its own way of doing things. Now, to give you an idea of where we are, we're overlooking the town of Terramina. We have Catania to the south, Messina to the north, and we're on the east coast of the island. If you look down here, you can see the town square here, the shopping and business area in the middle, and up on the hill on this side, the Teatro Greco, the Greek theater dating back to the third century BC. I can't wait to show it to you. There's history, culture, and incredible beauty. Welcome to Sicily. Forget Mount Olympus. I found the true home of the gods, and it's definitely Sicily. From the views of Mount Etna to its beautiful beaches and rugged gorges, your camera will forever thank you. Just off the tip of the boot of Italy, Sicily has to be one of the most beautiful places in the Mediterranean. And it's not just the landscape that's won me over. It's also the tranquil little towns and villages, its thought-provoking past, and the Italian hospitality that inspired me to appreciate all the Sicilian. So much of Sicily is a photographer's dream, but my favorite location has to be the town of Terramina. Here you'll discover ancient ruins, beautiful beaches, and spectacular views, like this one overlooking the whole town. Spectacular! After you look at the view over there, turn around. The little church at the top is built right into a cave on the cliff called Madonna della Rocca, or Madonna of the Rock. It's dedicated to all sailors of all nations who died at sea. Now, it's open on Sundays, but if you come up on any other day, make sure you go to the door and peek in that little window to look at the ceiling. It's all jagged rocks and stalactites from the cave itself. No wonder it's the most popular place on the coast for weddings. Terramina has to be one of the most picturesque towns I've ever seen, with original stone buildings and windy little cobblestone streets. And look, no cars. This is great, especially since the pedestrian zone is also the shopping zone. Now, what's a vacation without souvenir shopping, right? This is all Sicilian. Well, except for the hat that says New York. <laughs> Let's see what else we can find. Here's something typically Sicilian that you can buy. This is a Sicilian carretto, a little cart. Back in the old days, it was drawn by a horse, and the drivers would go from village to village selling their goods. Well, the more elaborately painted with stories and things on the side of the cart, the more customers that they would get. So the drivers would come into town, and they would start singing really loud and banging on a drum to draw attention that they were there, and the ladies would look out their window, and they would come over and they would buy the goods, and at the same time, the driver would tell the news of the region. He would tell what's going on in the last village. A Sicilian carretto. From puppets to pottery, you'll find plenty of stuff to purchase. Perfecto. You know what this is? This is made out of lava. You see this? From Mount Etna. Lava stone. You'll see all kinds of things carved here. Jewelry and little statues. But you know, half the fun of shopping is not what you find, but who you meet. Really? How do you do it? You, you, you do. Okay. Par on, get your teeth. <laughs> His goes wing, 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 mine goes thunk, thunk. Abrire. Oh, sorry, sorry. Abrire. Abrire. <laughs> what? Abrire. Oh, the tongue? Uh, Genji, what? I'm not very musically inclined. 
Since we're looking for items that are typically Sicilian, we can't forget the wine. Oh, and the wine in Sicily, it's fantastic. They say there's over 100 wineries here. Ah, <sighs> Rosso del Conte, even sounds Sicilian. But the wine is just the beginning. It's a liqueur made at Mount Etna. It's basically herbs and alcohol, and it's either 50% or 70% alcohol. They tell me it's a little bit like uh, grappa. Grappa, anyway. Um, Fuoco del Vulcano. Oh, and the bottles? Look, you can get a bottle as a souvenir that's actually covered in volcanic ash. I'm gonna forego the lava wine for something that's a little more refreshing. When you're walking and shopping, you get a little tired, I have one place for you to stop. A gelati stand. This is fantastic. Oh, buongiorno. Um, let's see, flavors. What is bacio? Bacio can mix the chocolate and the hazelnuts. Chocolate and hazelnuts, and how do you say nocciola? Hazelnuts. Hazelnut. What else do I not know? So many options and so many unfamiliar names. What to choose? What to choose? Oh, stracciatelle. Can I, can I taste it? If you're committing the biggest sacrilege in Sicily, dieting, there are options. Oh, over here, you have to see this. This is what they're famous for here. Have you ever seen a blood orange? Look. It's the sweetest orange you can taste, but look at the inside. It's red. Ah, it makes orange juice that looks like tomato juice, but it is so sweet. Mm, it's fantastic. The best part is you can find these gems in any of Sicily's open air markets. I've heard people say that they're so sweet that you can even eat the skin in the pulp. Supposedly, it's not bitter at all. Shopping, gelato, and blood oranges. Now this is Nirvana. Ah, I love to shop. Here's a tip. The interior of Terramina has cobbled streets, inclines, and stairs, but taxis are available on the outskirts of town with access to hotels and restaurants. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Sicily, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Well, after a sinfully good day of sightseeing and shopping in Terramina, you may want to cleanse yourself in the Sicilian surf. But I want to see what else makes Sicily so magnificent, so I'm off to discover the true essence of the island. And the best way to do that is to reflect on its past. Sicily was one of the most important islands in the ancient Mediterranean world. It's been home to the Greeks, the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Romans, the Byzantine Empire, the Muslims, and the Normans, just to name a few. And the evidence of these civilizations is everywhere, including its national symbols. Okay, we've stopped on the side of the road because there's something that I have to show you. On the house right behind me is the only existing symbol of Sicily that there is on the coastline. Look up here. You'll see it on the Sicilian flag. The three legs represent the three points of the island. And the face is Medusa. It may seem strange to have Medusa on your flag, but this symbol implies that the island is protected by the goddess Athena, who carried the head of Medusa on her shield after she was defeated. Medusa on the flag is not the only symbol you'll see representing the island. There's also the Catalina elephant and the birds of Syracuse. But there's more to Sicily than just its symbols, and another reason it's so special is the natural beauty of the island. You know, my hope is that when you see Sicily, you'll go, wow, I want to go there. That looks incredible. But don't even think about coming here in the heat of the summer. July and August, uh-uh, it is way too hot. I mean, like, over 100 degrees hot. And when you do come, make sure you don't miss Sicily's largest city, Palermo. Palermo has been a world-class city for centuries. Its importance in the world, as well as its cultural development, has always been driven by its port. In fact, the Greeks called Palermo Panormus, which means all port, and that name was used in official documents right up until the 18th century. While Palermo's fascinating, there's a lot more to explore on the island. The little town of Rondazzo is worth a stop. Looks like something right out of a movie. 
Sicily has some incredible little towns and villages you have to go exploring. Brandanzo here has a beautiful medieval old town. But for some real history, how about a visit to Agrigento? This area is known as the Valley of Temples, and for good reason. It has eight temples and lots of other ancient buildings. Agrigento was once the greatest city in the ancient Mediterranean world. All the temples were built in the Doric style, which is the oldest and simplest building style designed by the ancient Greeks. While the Valley of the Temples was created to honor the ancient gods, it's believed that the Piazza Armenia was created for more earthly purposes. Ongoing arguments rage over exactly who owned this villa, but scholars do agree that this ancient Roman home is not only impressive for its size, but for its beautiful mosaics. The most talked about artwork in the villa is this wall, bikini-clad women competing in various sports. Hey, who knew the bikini was vintage? But if it's mosaics that interest you, then you have to go to a building created by divine inspiration, the Cathedral Montreal. King William II began construction on the church after awakening from a dream. He said the Virgin Mary came to him in his sleep and asked him to build this church for her. The Cathedral Montreal is home to the most complete cycle of mosaics ever created in the Byzantine tradition. It contains 130 individual mosaic pieces of art. That's more than St. Mark's in Venice. All the artwork is inspired by biblical stories, and seeing these incredible mosaics is an inspiration in itself. This cathedral is a must-see for anyone coming to Sicily, but here's a tip. There aren't many parking spaces in Montreal, so you may want to catch a bus into town. Back in the car, it's onward to check out more of Sicily's amazing sights. And the most impressive is undoubtedly Mount Etna, the active volcano which just recently erupted. There's no stopping volcanic lava. It's not stopped by cars, by roads, by barriers, by houses, nothing. In fact, to give you an idea of how much lava came down Mount Etna in 1981, this wall behind me was the third story of a beautiful Italian villa, a gorgeous mansion, gone. Imagine this whole valley with beautiful houses and villas and vineyards, gone. There's a railroad track back there. They tell me that it's 25 feet higher than it was in 1980. That's incredible. And like the phoenix rising from the ashes, Bellissimo. Here's a tip. Many ferries to Sicily have reclining seats, food service, and movies with schedules from Rome, Naples, Malta, Tunisia, and Sardinia. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Sicily, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Sicily is an amazing vacation, and it definitely has its own personality separate from Italy. But the island is also known for something a little more infamous, the Mafia. I guess you could say Sicily is also known as a family destination. If all this looks like something out of a movie, actually, it is. Well, the first time I ever heard of Sicily was watching the Godfather movie. Well, a lot of the important scenes were shot right here in the town of Savica. The bar behind me. Do you remember the scene where Michael Corleone came to the bar and asked Apollonia's father for her hand in marriage? Well, it happened right there. Well, I borrowed this picture from inside, but as you can see, the scene was shot just to the right of the doorway. And in the picture, you can see Al Pacino sitting in the chair right there. And these are the actual chairs they used in the movie. And here's Apollonia's father in the chair here. If you're looking to meet one of the actors from the film, then you're in luck. Now, if you go inside the bar, you'll meet Maria. Maria's the owner. And when Francis Ford Coppola came here, he saw her face and said she's perfect to serve the wine to Al Pacino. Now, if you come in here, she's got a great little souvenir for you. This is Lemoncello. She only speaks Italian. Cello Siciliano. Okay, and as you see, Mar Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando, see? She put on the label. And what's special about this one? Al Pacino ed io, Maria. Maria and Al Pacino in a still from The Godfather. What a great souvenir. What a great face. Isn't she sweet? Grazie. Hey.
While you're inside, take a moment to look around the bar because they have fascinating memorabilia from the film. Not only was I lucky enough to meet Maria and see the bar for myself, but I also met the man who was responsible for tracking down all these authentic Sicilian locations. This is Christy Bonaventura, and he was the location manager for Godfather 1 and 3, working directly with Francis Ford Coppola. How did you come to find that little bar? Just by chance, actually. Because uh, being a guide, I was used to bring people, foreigner, tourists, to some small villages in the surroundings of Taormina to show them the real aspect of Sicily. I remember that little bar, so cute, so nice, that was exactly what they wanted to look for. And so I, we tried. They liked it. And Francis for Coppola, as soon as he saw it, said, that's the one. Absolutely. And there's another location that he used in the film right up the road. Yeah about the church, the church where the wedding took place. While I could stay and look at Godfather film locations all day, it's time to head back to our home base of Terramina. This has to be one of the most picturesque towns I've ever seen. In fact, it's so well preserved, it's been documented. Since Taormina is considered a World Heritage Site, it wasn't supposed to be bombed during World War II. That's why the town is so authentic. Well, it didn't quite escape the bombs because when the Americans found out that Field Marshal Kesselring was staying in the little hotel right behind me, they bombed the hotel. Now, he was the general commander of all the German troops in Italy, so that would have been a big score. Did they get him? Nah. He was staying at the best hotel in town, the San Domenico. The San Domenico is still the best place in town, but it's more than just a great hotel. It's a sacred landmark filled with history and culture. You know, it's always exciting for me to stay at a hotel that's a story in itself. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of the hotel? Yes, it's actually a former monastery, 15th century monastery, transformed into a hotel in 1896. The monks may have called San Domenico home 600 years ago, but the building's original use was a private residence dating back to the 1300s. Through the years, political figures, nobles, and celebrities have all visited here. In fact, as a hotel, it's hosted Cary Grant, Kaiser Wilhelm II, and President Harry Truman, just to name drop a few. Actually, it's no mystery why the rich and famous choose to stay here. The hotel is nothing less than divine. While the building's history is incredible, I found that the service is what truly makes the hotel special. Of course, the rooms are pretty spectacular, too. Each room has been designed to retain its historical integrity while incorporating all the modern amenities you'd expect in a luxury hotel. Rooms are large, incorporating a mixture of elegance and modern conveniences with subtle but luxurious furnishings. And while many rooms were added in 1806, creating the new wing, it's the original wing that's the most interesting. 120 original monk cells were transformed into 44 much larger guest rooms. So some of them, they are through the former monk cells, very, very unique. Well, I love a hotel with a past, and I adore a room with a view. And when's the last time you've seen a room with a view more spectacular than this? It goes from the beach to the snow-covered peaks on Mount Etna and on to the ancient amphitheater. Spectacular. Here's a tip. How do you avoid the chance of blood clots on long flights? Blood clots are not very common, but potentially very serious outcomes for people on a plane that are not hydrated enough. One of the best bets you have for avoiding blood clots on a plane flight is to keep yourself well hydrated. In addition to that, your blood doesn't like to stay still. It likes to be moved through your system. So making yourself move your legs on a regular basis, standing up and walking around, particularly on long plane flights, and actually even taking deep breaths helps to improve your circulation. Everyone should do those things. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Sicily, go to lauramackenzietv.com. According to local legends, Sicily was created for the gods. Here you'll find nothing but the best, whether it's scenery, accommodation, dining, or shopping, where even the smallest detail is appreciated and savored. And if you're looking for a romantic destination that you'll always remember, Sicily proudly delivers. 
You know, Sicily was a big surprise for me. It's a lot more beautiful than I expected. The people are friendlier than I expected. And the culture and food were a lot more Mediterranean than I thought it would be. All in all, I think I can say the whole experience was molto bene. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific place somewhere else around the world. Until then, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.